Good morning, Letitia. Here's your mission. The Greville Boosty Express 870 in brushed stainless steel. As you saw in the photos, this one is a bit, uh, got a bit of wear and tear, so scratches and dings around the front and a bit around the sides. But I just serviced it last night. Everything is perfect, works like new. And in this video, I'll be demonstrating that. I'll quickly go through how I make a coffee. Um, first, I start with a blank shot that's just going to warm up the machine, warm up my cup. And uh, if there's any coffee ground, this will clean that. In the meantime, I get my milk jug. Whoops, looks like I've got the cleaning disc in there. Well, that just demonstrates that the pressure is fine on this machine for you, in case you're interested. So I'll take the cleaning disc out. Please ignore that. You can do that once, you can do it twice. Um, usually once is okay, it's better than nothing. Uh, but if you could also leave the machine on before you start making this step. So um, I have the machine on for the past five minutes. That also warms up the machine. So if you turn it on, lock in the porta filter, and perhaps put your cup on top of the machine, so on the lid. Uh, the lid actually gets warm after a while. Not hot, just warm, because the boiler is just under, underneath it. Um, that's even better. So that's what I do, and that's what I do with most of this, uh, most of the machines of this of this caliber. Run out of milk, so I'm just gonna get more milk. Great. Next, you want to take out the porta filter and dry it. Grab a tissue or a napkin and thoroughly dry the porta filter. So your machine comes with three baskets. Uh, the one I'm using is a double shot, double wall. Uh, the, there's, there is one you can get, one more you can get, is a double shot single wall. Um, that one is a bit harder to use, but it may be easier to clean and may taste better. Uh, I'll still use this and see how you go. Uh, this is the one that, uh, I'll be making coffee on. So this takes about 17 grams of ground coffee. Um, you can do it in two steps, either grind the full 17 gram dose in there or you can grind eight and a half and eight and a half. That will probably be cleaner and will waste less coffee. So it's at grind size number 10. I wouldn't go much lower just because this basket will be quite forgiving. as well. Um, anyway, that's the first dose. Looks like it's a lot of coffee. That's 12 grams. Okay, so it looks like we either have to slow it down. Oh, it's on the double. My bad. Um, I'll just continue with, uh, with probably I'll, I'll get rid of some of this to make it into eight and a half grams. Sorry, just running a bit quick. Did not realize that it was on the double. Um, so yeah, try to keep it on single and do it twice. Or you can just put it on the double to make it all in one go. The advantage of the um, doing it half-half is you waste less coffee and you don't spill as much coffee onto the counter. Whereas if you do the double, it, the coffee may spill as you take out the porta filter from the grinding bay. Okay, so this is eight and a half. Once you get the first dose, after the first grind, just lightly press to make way for the second dose. This is the key step as to why we're doing it in two steps. And that's the second dose done. Looks good. Let's measure it. That's about 16 grams. So 
this gave me about seven, yeah, about seven grams, uh, if, if my math is mathing correctly. So I'll probably put it on, on the 12 o'clock, but I'll get you closer to eight grams. It doesn't have to be perfect, this is not a science experiment, but the closer you can, the better. We'll add a little bit more. And that should be 18, oh, sorry, 17. And it is, so that's 17 grams now. If you don't have a scale, that's fine. Just make a coffee using this 12 o'clock position on the grind amount. That will give you about eight grams. So do it twice, it'll give you about 16. Hopefully a bit more than 16. Uh, but yeah, anything between 16 and 17 is acceptable on this, on this basket. So press it nice and tight. If you don't have a scale, that's fine. Just look at the depth of the tamper. The silver part on the tamper should be flush with the rim. Um, if you can still see this silver part, then you have too much coffee, but if it's sunk this deep into the basket, then that's the, the right amount. If it's sunk too deep into the basket, then that's too little coffee, so if it sinks all the way down here, it's too little. In this case, it's perfect. Put it back, clean the edges, and lock it in all the way. Get your cup. I'm going to measure the output as well. You don't have to, but uh, it can help if you use a scale for the beginning. So I'm using the scale now to know what gives me what. So now I know that this gives me approximately eight grams um, on grind size 10. And I will admit that the grind size 10 is a little bit large, but just because of time restrictions, I'll keep it there and I'll make a coffee on grind size 10. Um, yeah, I wouldn't jump anything below eight or six. I did a calibration on this grinder a couple of years ago. So now if you go all the way ground size one, it'll actually be way too fine for the machine and the basket. So I wouldn't go anything near one, two or three. Probably, now I'll probably make a coffee on 10 and it'll probably be quick, just judging from ground size by hand. But yeah, if you wanted something stronger and more concentrated, try ground size eight. But don't, don't go much below, you know, like six or something. Anyway, um, now that we have reset the scale, we'll try to get uh, about 35 grams of coffee in there, so I'll press the button. I'm reprogramming the machine for you so that when you receive it, it's um, roughly the right settings for the button. If I reset it to default, it'll be too long, because Bravo for some reason programs their machines a bit too long. From factory. Okay, so that was, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds, running a little bit quick, I will admit. And we got 32 grams, 31 grams. Not too bad. Um, this will be a strong shot. So you can give it, a, give it a try. I'll run it a little bit more, just to extract more caffeine. And that's, that's it. Um, this will give you about 32 grams, which is about almost two to one ratio. Um, doesn't really matter. If, if you like the taste, keep it there. If you want something a bit longer, just hold the program button and that will reset the coffee settings for you, the, the button settings for you. Um, yeah, sorry it's a bit rushed, but just to summarize, we ground about 17 grams, we got about 32 grams, that's almost a 2 to 1 ratio. It happened a bit quick, if we want to slow it down, we have to grind a bit finer. So grind from number 10 to number 9 or number 8. Try with your own beans, because my beans are a bit old, they're about a month old. Uh, so try with your own beans, you may get better, better shots than me at, the, at these settings. But don't change anything before you get your own favorite brand of beans and make a coffee. Once you do that... Make a coffee, and if you have a scale, measure it. If you don't, just taste it. Um, if you don't have a scale, just, uh, like I told you, try to keep the depth of the tamper at this silver part. After you press, it the silver part should disappear. Uh, make a coffee with a double button, taste it. If it tastes too bitter or too sweet, sorry, too bitter or too sour, uh, you'll know if there's something wrong. And have a look at the quantity. This is about 32 grams. If you're getting a full cup of coffee, well, that's way too much. If you're getting a few drops, that's way too little. Try to keep it somewhere in the middle, so this is, about a third of the cup, yeah, maybe a third of the cup, uh, in my case, is about 32 grams. Um, and if you have a scale, that's even better. Try to get um, 17 grams in, 35 grams out, in about 20 seconds. Cool, a lot of talking. Uh, in the meantime, I will turn on the tamper, sorry, the steamer, and we'll steam some milk. I've got my jug here, which I don't know if it's included in the sale, but I've got a jug that's filled about halfway with milk. Uh, that's why it's cheaper, it doesn't have the jug. Uh, halfway with cold full cream milk. Nice, strong.
strong steam. Turn it off, then I'll turn it back on. There are good videos on YouTube on how to do steaming. Um, but basically, try to keep the jug at an angle and keep the milk spinning. And the tip of the milk wand, um, the depth will, how do you say it? The depth will determine how much froth you get. So if you keep the tip of the wand deep into the milk, you won't get much foam. Whereas if you keep it close to the top, it'll be noisier and it'll give you more air. So listen to this. Now I'm frothing it, giving it that air texture. Whereas if I raise it, it goes quiet. So if you want steamed milk, dunk the, the wand deep into the milk. That's just gonna steam it basically and not give it much foam. But if you want a bit of foam, try to keep it close to the top for the first few seconds, I guess. Um, I don't get it perfect every time and this is not my usual model, so it's not gonna be a perfect steaming session. I've used probably hundreds of this model, but yeah, I've never got it 100% correct, just because I'm always focusing on making the video. Um, but anyway, it looks good, honestly. Get a wet towel. So as you saw, after the milk steaming session, the machine will cool down. It'll purge some water into the boiler and into the tray. That's gonna bring it back to espresso temperature, which is now, as you can see, it's the buttons are lit. Um, get the, the wet towel and wipe the wand thoroughly because it gets really hot and the milk will stick to it. It will bake on it, basically, if you don't clean it right away. So the sooner you clean it, the better. Uh, that looks good to me. And if you have the time, just give it a quick purge. Just a couple seconds just to get steam to clean that uh, that hole down there and prevent any milk uh, build up into, in the hole and in the blockages. That's all done and one more thing, if you want to clean the grip head, instead of taking this to, to the sink and rinsing it under the tap, just press the double button or the single button, it'll give you some water, just flush, that's going to clean the group head and the portion of in the same step. And you're done. So, I think that's it. This is a bit of water, just wipe it, uh, just to keep your machine looking nice and clean. If the tray is full, empty it. Uh, usually you have to empty it every few days. And yeah, if you want to be extra nice to your machine, just get, get a tissue and wipe the crevices in the group head. There's always a bit of, as you can see, a bit of coffee grounds left in there. Um, and that is a latte on your Brevel Brewster Express. Sorry, it's a bit rushed. We didn't get the perfect settings, but at least you know where to start. Try grind size 10, maybe grind size 8 if you want a bit stronger of a coffee. Uh, milk is looking okay. Don't let it sit for too long, otherwise the milk will separate and it will become dry. So I'm swirling the jug just to mix up those layers of milk, the foam and the layer below it. And if there's any big air bubbles, just knock, knock it on the counter to break those. That's what you see baristas do in the cafes. There we go. That's a good, good amount of foam, actually. Uh, and if you're... If you've got enough dexterity, you can do latte art on this machine as well. Uh, we didn't get latte art today, I think. Uh, the, the milk is a bit thick for it, so we've probably got a cappuccino rather than a latte. Very similar drinks, by the way. But yeah, that's that's the coffee. I'm looking forward to having it. Um, thanks again for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. And I'll see you later tonight. Thanks again.